In this short video lecture, we're going to be solving a conduction problem with thermal resistances. So we're going to be solving this sample problem, which says a hot wire at a uniform temperature of 40 degrees Celsius and diameter um, one centimeter is coated with an insulating material of thermal conductivity K equals 0.1 watts per meter Kelvin with a thickness of one centimeter that is in perfect contact with the wire. The surrounding air is at 15 degrees Celsius and has a convection heat transfer coefficient of 20 watts per meter squared per Kelvin. How much heat is dissipated per meter of the wire at steady state? So here's our problem. This is the wire. So it's at a uniform temperature. So we can assume that that's also the surface temperature. Here is the insulation. And then here out to ambient, we're going to have convection. So we're trying to figure out, we have this heat that's here in the wire and it's trying to, to get out. So how does it get out? It first gets out by, it has to conduct through this insulation and then it has to convect from the insulation surface out into the ambient. So that means we're going to have a couple of different thermal resistances in series. So again, because this wire is all at uniform temperature, we're going to neglect any resistance in the wire itself because the temperature here is the same as here. So it's just a very good conductor of, of heat. So we can neglect that thermal resistance and we just want to go from this surface, which is at 40 degrees, as our problem states, out into ambient. So we could think about this by drawing a thermal circuit. So this is the surface temperature of the wire. To get from that wire surface, it has to conduct through the insulation. So this is going to be a conductive thermal resistance. And at this interface, let's call this the insulation surface temperature. Then it has to convect out into the ambient. And this resistance is a convective thermal resistance. So the equation that we would want to use would be that Q is equal to our, our two extreme temperatures, so this temperature and ambient. So we're going to go Ts comma wire minus T infinity divided by our total thermal resistance. So we are asked to find the heat loss per meter. So one thing we can do is we can just say, okay, this thing is it's one meter long. So L equals one meter. So now we need to go back and quantify our total thermal resistance, which will require quantifying our two, um, quantifying our conductive thermal resistance and our convective thermal resistance. So our conductive thermal resistance is going to be here. So we have heat conducting through this wire by Fourier's law. However, this is a, a cylinder. It's a, a cylindrical shell. So the form of that conductive thermal resistance, if we go here, it is not, you know, this, this table is our cheat sheet for the exam. Um, this is not a plane wall, so we're not going to use this L over K. We're instead going to account for that curvature and the fact that as heat propagates through, propagates outward from here, going outward, that it encounters a larger cross-sectional area or a larger area normal to heat transfer as it conducts outward. So this area keeps getting bigger and bigger the further you go out. So you can't use this simple conductive thermal resistance for a plane wall. You have to use this this term, which accounts for that curvature of a cylindrical wall, which is that our conductive thermal resistance is the natural log of R2, where R2 is the outer radius, and R1, where R1 is the inner radius, divided by 2 pi L K. So just plugging into that equation, um, we get our R cond is equal to the natural log of R2 divided by R1. Oh, and on the bottom we have 2 pi L, L is our length, times K, which is our thermal conductivity. 
So even though it's a cylindrical system, we don't have to, convection is a little bit different. So convection is just really happening at this interface. So we don't have to think about that changing area normal to heat transfer. We just have to think about it going from this interface outward. So our convective thermal resistance is the same whether it's for a plane wall or a sphere or a cylindrical wall. It's just that our convective thermal resistance is just equal to 1 over H times A. So these two resistances, as we discussed here, they are just in series. So when you add thermal resistances, you just add them. You, when you have thermal resistances um, in series, you just add them to get the total. So our R total is just equal to our R by conduction plus our R by convection, which is natural log of R2 over R1 divided by 2 pi LK plus 1 over HA. So we can plug and chug numbers into here. So our R total, again, is equal to the natural log of 1.5 centimeters divided by 0 0.5 centimeters. We don't have to worry about units here because we just, as long as the outer and inner radii are in the same units, this becomes unitless. So we don't have to convert to meters um, for this term inside the natural log. And just as a quick look at where these radii came from, so the the diameter of this cylindrical system, this inner cylinder, is one centimeter. So that means the it has a radius of half a centimeter. So that's where the 0 0.5 comes from at the bottom. And then if we were to take the outer radius going from here out to here, we take our half centimeter plus this thickness, which is a centimeter. And that's where the 1.5 centimeter comes from. Then we have 2 times pi times our, our basis length, which is 1 meter, times our thermal conductivity, which is 0 0.1 watts per meter Kelvin. And again, this is the thermal conductivity of the insulation because that's, we're not really thinking about the wire itself. It doesn't factor into this problem because we already have its outer surface temperature. So from that outer surface, it just has to conduct through the insulation and then convect to ambient. So we don't need to factor in the conductivity of the wire itself because we already know its outer surface temperature. So this is the conductive thermal resistance, and then we still need our convective thermal resistance, which again was 1 over H times A. So this is going to be 1 over H. And what is the outer surface area um, of our cylinder? That's going to be 2 multiplied by the outer radius. And now I do need to convert this part to meters, 0 0.015 meters for our outer radius times pi times one meter of length. So, oh, and I, since I'm going with numbers here, I'll put in the actual numerical value for our H. So here's where we have the 20 watts per meter squared Kelvin. So we end up with a total thermal resistance of 2.28 Kelvin per watt is our R total, and then we can get our, our heat loss per unit length is just the same as our total heat divided by L, but our L is just one meter, so this ends up just being Q divided by one. So this is our TS minus our T infinity, and this is our TS wire minus T infinity divided by our R total, which, and I guess we could have our L in there as well, which gives us 40 minus 15 divided by 2.28 um, Kelvin per watt. Actually, I'm going to get rid of that L because we already factored that in with our basis. And so solving this, we get that our total Q loss, so our Q per unit meter, which is the same as our 
Q of this one meter section is equal to 10.96 watts per meter. And again, to relate, um, yeah, Q prime is just equal to Q divided by L. So we would just divide by our one meter, which gives us the same numerical answer. Thank you.